This will be my last uh, video of Substance, if you could call it that. And at that rate, we don't really have any major course themes this week. We're just simply preparing for assignment number three. Uh, just to walk through the steps that I normally uh, use to give students some guidance, obviously the first thing is have a look at your A3 instruction sheet. Uh, think about the list of questions on there and which one might interest you. By now, hopefully, you will have at least had a look at the weekly modules and learning, and this should give you some idea on key terms that's uh, represented in each essay question. So you you shouldn't be looking at an essay question going, ah, oh, what, what does that mean? You should actually already have some idea and then base your preferences on that. If your question involves a case study, uh, you need to choose a different case study to what you did in assignment one. Uh, you could look at something that you did in assignment number two, So, uh, but also you need to choose one of the five case studies again. But like I said, something different from assignment one. Uh, basically, all the essay questions reflect the course themes in the second half of the course. Not to say that you couldn't still refer to origins, sources and actors, but don't try to repeat assignment number one. Yes, it's great when students reflect that language and show me that they understand because assignment one was really uh, looking at the basics of how we describe uh, conflict in the field of conflict resolution studies. Uh, so to show me that you still remember how to do that is great, but we want you to start to look at conflict resolution methods, interventions, strengths and weaknesses, uh, what's the role of the United Nations, what about transformation and longer term issues related to conflict resolution. These are the type of things we've picked up in in the second half of the course. And all assignment work that you ever do in any unit uh, the more you reflect the actual course learning, the better. Even if there seems to be an obvious question, I don't even have to look at any of the weekly learnings to answer that. We will be looking at you reflecting that you have learned something. You are a student of conflict resolution, not just someone who watches the news and who finds it really interesting. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. Uh, now, Another step beyond the instructions is as you look at the criteria, you'll see uh, that this is our expectation because some of the criteria includes things like theory and concepts being able to refer to that. So that's saying we want you to directly uh, draw on those weekly learnings and the course material. So depending on your question, some weeks will have more relevance than others. Uh, I can help you with that, but as I said, if you've been following the weekly reading and even have a look at what the title of each week is. So week seven, intervention, also covers things like peacekeeping. Um, and then transformation will cover ideas such as justice and reconciliation as well. You'll find some readings in there on those sorts of issues. Week six is great for covering a whole lot of different conflict resolution methods. Uh, you know, diplomacy, peacekeeping, peace building. What are the differences between them and where do you go uh, to find out more about what they mean? Okay, so have a look at the criteria have a look at the essay instructions. Uh, once you choose a question, break apart your question, make sure you're reflecting that you understand key terms. If it's talking about peace building or peacekeeping, demonstrate that you have read something around those and you can define peacekeeping. Uh, what, do, uh, what do other scholars say about the weaknesses and strengths of that? And then when you bring in your case, uh, you're combining that. So you're saying, okay, this is what peacekeeping is. You know, some of the weaknesses uh, can be this or some of the criteria around it for successful peacekeeping is this. And we see from this case, um, ABC happened. And what does that say overall about those course themes that you've been reading? So you're mixing that scholarly research with your own independent research around a case. So I can help you with some ideas on how to do that in a plan. But please, it's it's coming to me about a plan is not going to be great until you've done some reading because the reading is where your ideas start to form. Um, so if you're answering a question that's talking about strengths and weaknesses, you're going to have no idea what they are until you start reading. And as you read, my suggestion is start to jot down some notes on those strengths and those weaknesses and core ideas behind peacekeeping, for example, um, and then jot down some notes on your case and, and work on combining that and start to think about a plan. As you jot down ideas, jot down not only uh, the author that it might have come from, the reference, but also a page number. Uh, good Harvard referencing to get up towards distinction and high distinction Harvard referencing comes from also including page numbers. Without that, uh, you're pretty much bound to a credit uh, on referencing, so that's just one requirement. So we want to know where a detail and fact came from exactly. So unless it's really general knowledge, we should see a page number, and not only in quotes. 
yes, definitely in quotes with double quotation marks, but even without a, it being a quote, you know, if you're talking about 150,000 people died in, in this conflict, well, tell us, where did that come from? Is there a page number? There's not always a page number, uh, but mostly there is, and certainly in a, in a assignment with scholarly research, which we do expect to see, we would expect to see some page numbers definitely throughout, um, and the more the better. Okay, so look at the page number, start to jot down your notes and get an idea. Oh, sorry, not look at the page number. Look at the assignment instructions. Uh, start to research around it. So firstly, go back to the, uh, the weekly readings that are the most relevant to you, which week in the course learning. Start to read around that. Start to do your independent case research. As you start to jot down some key points uh, around that theme, jot down page numbers of where those key points come from because you'll be able to use that when it comes to citations and putting it together. Have a look at the criteria. Always bear that in mind when it comes to actually writing up. So um, by now, hopefully you've got a plan that you can show me as well. Then it comes to writing up. Now go back and have a look at the feedback I've given you on previous assessment, particularly assessment one, uh, but also assessment two will be relevant as well, though they're much smaller assessments, quite different. So it won't be quite as relevant as your feedback on assessment one. What was the criteria I was honing in on? Was I saying to you that uh, perhaps the evidence could be incorporated a little bit better with the course themes. Was I talking about paragraphing and making your key points clearer? Uh, was I talking about answering the essay question? Now, please, this is a learning journey. I'm very sorry if my feedback has come across as critical at any point. It's never meant to be. It's meant to be constructive. Um, I can be quite direct. Uh, you know, in how I, fr I phrase things because I want everyone to be really clear on what it is I'm trying to say when I give feedback on assignments, but we're all on a learning journey. So that's what I want you to take away from this, um, that there's scope to improve. You know, I, sometimes people come to me and they've got a solid credit or a distinction and they're really disappointed in their mark. I'm like, but these are good marks. These are strong marks. Um, so really just take from my feedback the one or two, two areas where I'm saying work on these and you can get even higher. That's what the learning journey is. I expect very few people to be perfect at this point. In fact, no one ever is. Um, even the one or two students who might end up with a HD normally still have some room to grow. Uh, so it, it just means that they perform very strongly on the criteria across the board, okay? Uh, there's no uh, secrets or mysteries here. So do refer to the criteria and particularly the criteria that I have already indicated is an area for you to strengthen. Okay, so they're my main tips this week. I'll try to post a couple of others. Uh, there's, you know, particularly a YouTube that I like to post on paragraphing, writing paragraphs. It's called Peel. Um, it's just a strategy. Paragraphs in themselves are almost like mini essays and ultimately your essay is a whole string of paragraphs put together. So how you kind of have an introduction sentence saying this is basically the key point I'm making here. Um, some evidence, you build an argument, a little bit of a conclusion and the link to next. So if you structure and plan your thoughts, it's going to be much better. Um, a one page paragraph should be a red flag. Too big, too many ideas uh, caught up in one. Now your ideas might be related to a bigger point, but still you can almost always divide a one page paragraph into at least two major points and that helps you uh, clearly communicate to the reader what you're trying to say but also to plan better in, uh, for yourself as well. Uh, now my other final tip is to come along or, or to uh, actually at this point it will be to have a listen to the collaborate session we had on A3. So hopefully you attended but if you didn't attend please listen to the recording. Uh, this is really me covering some of the points uh, that I'm going through here in a bit more detail. So come along to that. And like I said, you're welcome to email me a plan, but I would like to see you do a little bit of this background work yourself first in the first instance so that when I can uh, discuss the plan with you or give you some feedback, we're on the same page. Otherwise, anything I say could actually end up confusing because you haven't got some reading behind it. So good luck, everybody. And, you know, it's been a little bit quiet here on the discussion board, but well done. You're almost there. And I hope you get a little bit of a break in between teaching periods. My next video will be my farewell.